Hi and welcome back to the channel again and we're going to talk today about Michael Hutchins because Jane and I went to see the film the other night called Mystify Michael Hutchins and we thought it might be interesting to talk about it a little bit because in 1994 we were there when he met Paulie Yates. So it was in 1994, I think, that we went on the big breakfast, was it? Yes, it was. I can remember it very well. And people listening in, we were um, doing the uh, uh, big breakfast. There was a, a show on Channel 4, and we were doing the um, next week's News Today predictions with Paul E.H. Do and you we, remember the first time we I came do, across it? I do, and we had a, score, a scoreboard, what was pending, what was right, and what was wrong. And I can remember us... When we arrived there, they showed us into the dressing room, which is like the green room. And uh, I can remember Paula walking in. Such a tiny little waist she had. She had a 1950s yeah. well, uh, Remind dress. me, was that when we were at the audition? No, this wasn't. Because we did the audition first with some other people, didn't we? Well, we came top out of 350 psychics. And we had to make some predictions in advance. And I remember one of the ones you made, that um, the Queen's Corky will be ill or something, die or something, one of the predictions you made, and it I did made, that week, didn't it? Well, I made and they a thought, lot well, predict. these guys get it right. Well, we were chosen out of 350 mm. psychics, and I didn't particularly want to do do it, and I can remember they went out the room, and I said, be quiet, Craig, because you have a habit of over-talking, and uh, the next thing, they phoned us up, and they offered us if we wanted to go on the show, and I said I would think about it. Yeah. So anyway, they took us on, didn't they? And that was back. That was nine. That would have been. I'm sure it was. was I thought it was a bit earlier than that. 1994. No, 1994. So that was the launch of the first show, yes, wasn't it? Really. Yeah. I mean, we were on the first week for a year on the Friday for one year, and uh, when we were shown into the green room, the dressing room, I remember Paula walking in, and she had the most tiniest little waist. She had a 1950s <coughs> sparkly dress on. And she went, hi, my name's Paula, pleased to meet you, and shook hands with us. See, I didn't really know who she was then. I'd only seen her on the Tube, wasn't it, that she used to be? Yeah, it was I, saw, the I, saw, tube, I saw her The music programme, so yeah. I kind of got glimpses of her, but didn't know anything about her personality no. or what she'd be like as a person. I liked her. Yeah, I, I kind of liked her straight away. She, she was, I liked the fact that she was kind of, she looked all innocent, um, <laughs> but, she, but she was really quite a... Um, She's intelligent. <laughs> Very intelligent person and quite a person underneath it all, wasn't she? She was very witty. I mean, you couldn't take her on with a with a bout of wits, could you? Oh, she. I liked her because she was a real, well, that time a really strong woman. I felt. Yeah. And uh, and I know for a fact she didn't drink or do drugs. So did you know much about her before we met? Well, not really. Not really. No, it was all so, very so new. Was, to for me, us. it was all completely new. That was that was up in. We went up to. Um, London, wasn't it, to Canary Wharf, to Channel, uh, not Channel 4, Planet 4, yeah, remember? No, Planet, Planet 24. <coughs> that's it, Planet 24 on Channel 4, that's it. Planet 24. And, um, yeah, they were quite, uh, it's quite all modern then, because this, the Big Breakfast was the groundbreaking programme. Extreme really, wasn't it? I mean, what a programme that was, the first live television, because up to then, Morning television was just absolutely well, boring. Well, it was a new format. It? Nobody mm. ever done anything like totally that, had dull, they? Totally wasn't it? Yeah. But, um, yes, and I can remember um, <clears throat> she had this beautiful dress on, and we were in the makeup room, and then uh, we had to get up very, very early. We had, in those days, you had to fax in your predictions at 11 o'clock at night, and then leave here at 3 o'clock in the morning to get the 4 o'clock train to take us to London. Craig and Jane, you got loads of things right in fact so many things right we couldn't fit them on the board right 13 ready for friday the 13th it's very good isn't yep. it not bad going. So, what tell us what you got right should i run from and yeah I'll, I'll okay wait um protests from french farmers lambs linked to this and there's the lambish things they got they've got horns, horns but almost. <laughs> um queen and yeltsin meet you remember jane said that there's a clip there about that and been... he looks poorly as well so right. he got that one right too um another semtex discovery uh, that was the one linked with south africa which is that one there they were trading things with semtex huge fire in a building near a canal it actually happened near the river avon so if you can call the Avon a canal, I don't know. Um, Good enough, it's water. MI5 uncover IRA, so you won't have one for that. That's linked with the other story. 
Um, strange story linked with the North Pole. Slightly out, it was the <laughs> South Pole. Um, couldn't be further away, but the same sort of thing. Um, <laughs> basically, they're going to try to walk to the South Pole. So we... There might be more on that story later. Very good. Uh, there's a bit about a building society. I won't go on to that one. Um, building company collapses. There's one in locally to us. Hildeen Builders collapsed. <laughs> um, and we also that got was some... A local of, tremor. That you a know, local tremor. We were yeah, picking up wide. vibes close to home. And we got some of the Mont things right. Um, the Jubilee line to go ahead. Cuts in Whitehall. Interest rate cuts. You remember was on the wrong one last week. And we said about council houses, well, he's spending money buying empty houses, which I suppose are going to be council houses at the end of the day. So and there was a train crash in Pakistan some time ago, which we didn't mention as well, on the week we said it. So we're feeling pretty chuffed. You do? You feel like you're bursting with confidence oh. now. Right, what, what about this week? So that big breakfast was quite amazing, really, wasn't it? I mean, we were having to make predictions every single week um, to predict next week's news today. And it wasn't easy because we had to do it before the newspapers or the media knew anything. So it's quite a hard job to do. Yeah. And, and so and the news at that time was all about politics, wasn't it? And um, I remember you predicted a really good one about that boy impaled on railings. Yes. Which is a pretty horrible 14 year old boy. <coughs> but it happened the next week, didn't it? A yeah. boy fell and out also, of a window. Also, I predicted when Princess Anne would get married and the venue and where it would be. Yeah, and I remember that, well, we did so many. We, we uh, the, the um, fire at Windsor, I remember, we did, didn't we? We had the big, we had a big boat that and sank the, off the Scotland. Wacko, the Wacko, um, yeah, thing. I think it was called Wacko, wasn't it? Or something it was a like religious, that. religious, religious cult. sect. And that, and that yeah. would catch on fire, I think, because we saw it visual and it happened. And we predicted the horse slasher too, didn't we? Do you remember the, the person that started oh, yeah, slashing horses, horses and yeah. we said about that? Yeah. So it was all weird stuff, really, but stuff that you couldn't get in the newspapers. Yeah. I remember saying one day Chris, uh, Cliff Richard would lose his voice. And he did. He had to cancel a concert. He just lost his voice. So there was all sorts of strange stuff. And Paula, you liked working with Paula? I liked working with her because she was funny. Cause <coughs> I can remember saying to her, tune into her aura, Paula. She said, constantly tuning yeah, into her aura. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, I mean, there was no, there was, this is why I think when you do predictions nowadays, you know, uh, we were used to it with a highly critical person, wasn't there? Because if we got something wrong, it was wrong, you know, and she'd jump into it. But if we got something right, she was amazed, really. She wasn't an easy to convince person, really, was she? Oh, I, I liked her, she was bubbly she, and she's, I didn't mind it, because, I mean, she, she, she tore us to pieces in the nicest possible way. She's a flirty, a flirty yeah. girl, you know, like the newspaper had got and the eyelashes over it, and sort of mimicking and, and laughing. Yeah. It was quite fun. So she, yeah, she was a good person to deal with. Here now with our resident psychics, Craig and Jane, who had a complete fantastic week last week, didn't you? You yes. predicted everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Uh, we predicted a child murderer caught, and I felt a gold earring and tattoo, and the child knew him, and this has happened. There's that one. Uh, right. Marches in London. We both were saying about that. Right. right. Interest rate cut. Oh, that's the interest that rate. That happened on the same day, that's in the March. fact, didn't it? Yep, uh, both of those. Winston Churchill leads the opposition to government economic policies. <laughs> God, he yeah, was on that. there. We didn't have the dead Winston Churchill either. And um, Queen's pet corgi, got that. That was from a few weeks before. But you still got it. Yes. And also, which sadly wasn't said on the programme, but you, will, you can testify that we said this, we faxed in on our earlier thing to say that an egg would be thrown at the Queen. Yes. Ooh. And what happened yesterday? Oh, and another one too. Social security cuts. We said too, didn't we? And they said in the paper today that they're not going to. They're going to peg it below inflation. So you really did have a good week. I remember. Um, I remember. I, I made one prediction, and I mentioned Huey Green, and we weren't I allowed to. That. Yeah, one of the predictions sent off was about Huey Green, and, I, and they crossed it out. And I didn't know why did we cross. Why did you cross it out? It was only later. I mean, I knew nothing about that she'd had a connection with him in the past, let alone that she was to find out later that Huey Green was her actual father. That's very sad, isn't it? Yeah. I found that very sad. So that was a shock, and that was a major shock to her, you know. Well, she... Because um, it wasn't said on the show, but... Well, she was, you've got to understand, she was brought up as an only child, and um, 
a sweet little girl and suddenly brought up in a world where Jess Yates, who was her father, who used to be a little bit eccentric, used to be on songs of praise, yeah. used to play the organ. I, I think after the Huey Green business, it was a bit of a turning point for Paula Yates, actually. I think it was a bit of a uh, well, hammer a blow shock. to her, it's wasn't it? It's a shock, it? isn't it? It's yeah. a shock. And then on top of that, um, <coughs> um, there was all the there was there, there seemed to be other problems bubbling in the background. I mean, she had she loved her children. I always thought. Well, I can remember she bought the youngest one on set, and and the baby. I think baby, that would have been peaches, wouldn't it? She no, brought uh, on set. Was no, it? it was Pixie. Well, Pixie the baby. The baby had a baby grill on and it had like egg yolk down the front. Obviously she picked the baby up to come to the uh, set and it's quite early in the morning because we all had to be on air from like 7, 7.30. And, um, and I remember the next week when she came into the dressing room, this little girl was dressed all pretty and lovely, frilly things and mm. everything. She was a good mother. Yeah, I thought she, and she seemed to be a very good family person generally. I mean, from everything I'd heard her talk about there, she seemed to be you know, pretty together with Bob Geldof, didn't she? She seemed, oh, I seemed like to Bob me, Geldof. She, uh, she seemed to, every time <coughs> his name was mentioned, she was always seemed to brighten well, up. I like him because of what he'd done for humanity and for live aid, and I felt he was a very intelligent man and down to earth. Yeah, I if mean, I, we didn't no, meet Bob personally, but we did I've but got a briefly. Letter from him. You got a letter from him, yeah, and we did, we did bump into him briefly when we went to that thing with. Um, What's the disc jockey's guy? Boy George. Yes, we went to Boy yeah. George thing, didn't we? We used the DJ then. They used to have some amazing parties and things, but Bob Geldof didn't like parties. He, he wouldn't turn up to them most of the time. <coughs> but um, yeah, so we, we got kind of got to know... I feel we got to know Paula pretty personally because we were doing that for how long? O over a year, well, every we, week well, we were seeing our, her. Our, we piece, once a week. our um, piece um, was actually... We had to work with Paula and uh, Gabby Roslin and sometimes Chris Evans. So that was our piece. Yeah. On so yeah, it was only meant to be for a couple of weeks and we were getting so much right, they wanted us on every week, didn't they? Well, they yeah, extended and we it and extended it. Yeah. And that yeah. very nice man that run it, Wahid, um, lovely man he was. That um, Well, he's a lord. Lord well. now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, I like him. Or he used him. to wear a, silver, a golden jacket, I remember. He Did he? Wearing. Golden waistcoat. Yeah. No, he was very smart. Yeah. I liked him. I gelled with him very much. But it was so sad when poor things went wrong for Paula. Well, actually... And perhaps we should talk about that next. Immediately after um, we do our bit, um, when we do our predictions... On the settee. On, yeah, our settee. <coughs> um, Paula would then do her interview, wouldn't she, with um, a famous star every week. On the bed. the conclusion was, of the on show. On the bed. And she'd have them in bed with her, wouldn't Not she? Not in bed, well, on, on the, the bed. bed. Or laying on You're the You're making it sound like she's... Yeah, so that was good though, because we, because we were in that spot, we were in an absolutely amazing kind of a position, because we met all the big stars before they went on. Every week, they'd be in the same green room with Sitting us. Sitting next or, to us. Uh, or in the... Um, in the makeup together, our name and we got to, we got to meet so many, didn't well, we? Well, our name because Craig's got an appalling memory. Patrick Swayze. Oh, I remember him because I remember I didn't Patrick, know who he was. Yeah, <laughs> Patrick Swayze with his entourage. Boy George, um, Glenda Jackson. Um, What's Carly the, drunk, Malone, the drunk fellow that was in uh, Oliver um, Reed? Oliver Reed. <laughs> he, was he was looking for the whiskey. <laughs> I remember. No, no. He was saying, "Have you got a drink?" No, <laughs> they were told. And they're the hiding it. The runners would say, don't offer him a drink. And because one of them offered him a drink, meaning tea or coffee, he said, oh, I'll have a whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Tom Jones, I remember. He oh, was he a, was nice. He was really, really nice man, Frank Tom Bruno. Jones. Frank Bruno, another nice fellow too. He spent quite a long time. Take that with Robbie Williams. I remember, I remember Frank Bruno said to you, he was, ooh, she was all the psychic lady. Call me lady. The, yeah, the voodoo yeah. lady. And, um, Robbie Williams, I remember they thought I was Robbie Williams when I stuck my head out the window because they screamed, <laughs> the girls were all screaming outside. I can see the likeness, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> you, sent him to, you sent him to get tea and coffee for you because you thought he was the runner. Because that was Take That then. No, Robbie he, Williams, or was it one of the others in no, the Take That was, band? No, it was Ali Wahid. The owner. Oh, what was it? Well, he. I thought you sent Robbie Williams off to. Yeah. I might. No, you're getting mixed up. Still a black son. Okay. Robert. Yeah. No, he started off as a runner, and he was so nice. He carried my handbag, and he said to me, 
do you know my mother? And I thought, how on earth would I know his mother in East End of London? Oh, that was Cilla Black's And I said, who's your time, mother? Yeah. He says, Cilla Black's. Oh, I've heard of her. And we both both yeah, start laughing. Yeah, because he was on there quite a lot, wasn't oh, he? Oh, he's lovely. Yeah, he was he's a nice such a fella. Very nice. Oh, yeah, amazing. But there we were, sort of just two ordinary stars. people. Two ordinary people that had, had No, two extraordinary, extraordinary people. Extraordinary, wonderful people. Yeah, OK. <laughs> but where we were sort of... Um, suddenly thrown into this world where every single week we will be in a class celebrities and weren't we, we? And, and we, I mean, we didn't even know who they were i didn't know half of them no. then the jackson i didn't recognize her oh. um uh, i recognize uh, carly minogue because uh, celeste the, our daughter was always so tiny bonkers little about girl, her she? she was tiny and then she, of course she was tied up oh, with michael uh, Naomi campbell oh yeah Naomi campbell god yeah. blimey when you think about it yeah anyway that's where we were um, so we could name drop every week, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> friends. What did yep. you do? Oh, we were we were just talking to whoever it was. Uh, Patrick Swayze. Uh, yeah, and all those other stars. Some of the stars. You sometimes say, "Oh, we watch television sometimes, don't we?" You say, "You know him." I'm like, "I don't." You met him on the Big Breakfast, or you know him. You met him on that program, or that. It's amazing how many people we have actually met. Isn't it? Yeah. Really? Like, amazing. Well, the only people, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, and we kind of got on with them because we didn't treat them as big stars, did we? We just treat them as ordinary people, and we just get on. Well, with that's what normal. they are, aren't they? It's just doing the job. Like... <coughs> Chris Eubanks was funny. I thought I liked Got him. his words back to Frank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried to have a philosophical conversation a posh with him. boy that gets his word back to a semi-posh. Yeah, and Paulie Yates wiped the floor with him, didn't she, that oh, time? Well, because he was naughty. He was she? being so chauvinistic. I mean, he well, just went misogynistic. You. And he just went in and, and well, she, she just destroyed him. Yeah. Oh, I, like, I love yeah. Paula. But that, so that's what Paula was doing. But, of course, I mean, out of all those thousands, the one that really rings true is because uh, since we saw the pro uh, television program which i really enjoyed that program actually the um, you mean the film the film yeah <laughs> well okay. the film yeah but <laughs> see what i mean <laughs> it's alzheimer's <laughs> coming I'm very like a sieve uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the and what was the name of the film mystified <laughs> mystified michael hutchins wasn't it see you've I forgotten think so. already but it was um, a good a do do documentary <coughs> a good documentary good. <coughs> worth seeing if you get a chance to see it yeah. um so you recall better the day that she met him what what, well, what, what uh, was her attitude like what, how was she feeling when well she, she after she'd done the piece with us she had to run upstairs and jump on the bed which is they do the interviews on the bed and we were the door was open and we could see everything from the green room. And Paula put her legs over, just like that, Craig. <laughs> and said, well, tell me, are you such a rock god, as they say, and pulling him oh, like yeah, this? On the show, and you, on could the see, you could see the chemistry and everything. You could and, see everything else, too, the way uh, she was, uh, I remember. She was very, <coughs> on the television, doing? on what? the actual footage, oh, no. it's quite, quite And uh, she was, well, blatant. she's flirtatious god. to get the best out of the man. One has to do that, don't you, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and then uh, you could see the chemistry there and you could see her flirtiness as, you know, definitely. And he loved it, absolutely loved it. But she'd been a fan of his. I didn't realise it, but she used to keep a picture of him on her fridge or something, and even at home with Bob Geldof. And Bob Geldof wrote some funny comment no, on he it. he ripped it down. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. So that was, that, was, that was the way it came together there. So that's when they met. It's the fantastically talented Michael Hutchins. Hi. Mm. And do you think you're going to get married? <laughs> Straight out of the clock. <laughs> um, and, uh, what? Do you think no. you'll get married? <laughs> no, no. Why not? No. We're happily unmarried. Are you? Mm. Why don't you fancy getting married then? I just, we wants, because everyone wants us to get married. I don't. I know, so for you. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Terrible idea. She's yeah. got to learn to cook first. Yes. Do you think you'll do more acting? Yeah, as long as, you know. I can get the right parts and they're not too too much of a reach, yeah. I really wanted to do um, play the part of, I think it was Tika, the, the guy in the middle in uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. They really want me to do that. Hugo Weaving got it in the end, which is great. He does a great job. But I would have loved to have done that. Why? i just dress up in drag and run around the, the outback and, <laughs> you know. It's really been... Just wonderful, and I think you're my favourite guest ever. No, oh, you, you are. I like you more than Willem Dafoe. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? That's real good. And um, I can't wait for your. Um, well, I can't wait to hear your greatest hits. Thanks. All of them. <laughs> All of them. So we were there when Paulie Yates met Michael Hutchins, 
Um, but I remember when it, because we'd finished on the big breakfast, of course, hadn't we? By the time all this yes, tragedy yes. started to hit, yeah. the, hit the screen, it's, I mean, I felt a bit, I wish we'd been able to talk to her, really, you know, because we might have been able to help her because she was quite open to psychic things, Paula, really, wasn't she? Not just because of the show, but if you said anything to her, she was kind of, I can see she was kind of open to it. I think she, she was a bit frightened of me, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think so. I she wouldn't say much. Yeah, uh, that's probably more she like She was a bit it. frightened yeah, in that yeah. because... Uh, I think she was. Yeah, because every time I used to walk in the dressing room, the lights used to flicker on and off, and I think they thought it was my supernatural powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she, she, perhaps she was. But when... But she, but she, what I always remember as a very bright, sort of bubbly person. I mean, mm. they were working from three o'clock in the morning, they had to get on oh, she, set. She was a know. fabulous person. <coughs> and, <coughs> and, um, <clears throat> and then next thing we know, it was all out in the media and in, in the press and that. I mean, she looked like a different woman when, when oh, we saw her on the screen. we saw the transformation, didn't we? So, so for like, those that haven't heard it, what, what happened? What happened to Paula? <clears throat> Well, I think with Paula, there was a lot of stress and stress on him. And I think she had fallen head over heels in love. And um, <clears throat> and then we heard that she went to a fertility clinic to oh, get yes, pregnant. Oh, that was true. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's what he wanted was a, a child. And, then, and he actually fawned over uh, Tiger Lily, didn't he? Because that yeah. was the child they had. Yeah. And uh, then there was custody battles, uh, backwards and forwards. And I think what it was... Uh, Michael suffered with depression and then we heard that they got involved in drugs and did it but I can honestly say I didn't see Paula with drugs for me no. Yeah and she was known to be someone that was T-total. clean of drugs wasn't T-total. she? She was not someone that took them. I don't think Bob Geldof would have been a man that would have, I mean he maybe probably did when he was, oh, no. was a pop star He's but a... I mean I don't, he, he didn't seem to be from what Set, so no, I think he anything was, like that. No, I think life. he was um, a very uh, sensible, good mm. father, um, and that, I think the only weakness I think with Bob Geldof is that he got up too late in the day. Yeah, that, just like this one. In fact, that's what Paula always <laughs> said. What, what, she mentioned Bob; he was always still in bed, wasn't yeah, he? Because <laughs> they, they phoned and him at any time. Of they day. phoned him up once when we were, were live on air, and he wasn't too happy. <laughs> no, he'd been asleep. That must have been in the afternoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> But but okay so but there was such a terrible transformation in Paula after she so sad uh, things had gone wrong really hadn't they in her life yeah. and um, well you think of the poor girl she found out who her real father was she'd fallen in love with um, with him and there's a custody battle over the children yeah and then then Michael dies and that and she was devastated so that poor and girl and he died in such unusual circumstances. I believe it was suicide. I mean the coroner's report said he died of strangulation didn't he? Suicide. But there was all sorts of press stuff about that it was some sort of auto auto fixation, fixation uh, auto <laughs> uh, yeah, some <laughs> sexual sort of uh, or thing where they tie oh, themselves up and I get to the point that. they're almost dead choking I, I themselves. I believe he was tired. Auto eroticism. Yeah I believe yeah. he was tired he was on sleeping tablets Prozac um, Valium and that, and I think it was just too much, and obviously been drinking. That's what, that's what, what you felt about it. You yeah. don't think there was anything odd going on no, in the back room, sort I of don't. thing. I don't. I no. don't. I think it's like most of us. If we don't get a good night's sleep, then we're really like shit. So, the but next if, day. He, if he if he if he strangled himself, did he commit suicide? Well, I think he did so, because he had tied it on the back of the door of the hotel yeah. room, and the maid couldn't get in. So uh, you know, and he probably was. If you're taking sleeping tablets with alcohol, bad combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing I think that was wrong with him, actually... Sensitive. Is, it was interesting because it came up in the movie, didn't it, that he'd had this accident. Oh, yes, the frontal And that lobe. accident damaged the frontal lobe, which and it meant he had no sense of smell from that point on. Now, I know from what I've studied, I've read a bit about the brain, particularly when I read recently in um, Bill Bryson's new book, The Body, which is fantastic about the brain, brilliant book. <clears throat> but he said that the 
actual sense of smell is absolutely connected in the brain to the emotional centers. Yeah. So when the sense of smell goes, it kind of, if you damage that part of the brain, you also damage the emotional centers. That's why I think he was so Got aggressive, anger, anger and, after the accident. And also, it's said in the film that he was sad that he couldn't smell his baby. You know, like newborn babies, <coughs> talcum powder smell beautiful, don't yeah, they? Yeah, well, and that would create a form of, I think, depression. Well, because it's very depression. subtle and it happens over a long period of well, he, time if the, you damage that part of the brain. Didn't his brother and all in the band, they notice a personality disorder Personality change. changes. So yeah. I think it was undiagnosed, well it was diagnosed because they knew there was a physical private, condition. But he didn't go to the doctors for ages about it yeah. uh, and, and was trying to avoid any medical intervention. Um, so presumably there was a hidden depression there that was building up in the background. And I think in Paula's life, I mean, she, often the brightest sparks often seem to hide sometimes a depression, don't they? Well, I think with Paula it's just stress building up. And when we saw the final faces of, of, of you know, of what she looked like in those bits oh, of she camera work, really she, she really did look. And it really, I think it reminds you, doesn't it, of, Drugs. Um, well, how fragile life is and how, you know, it, it could all just, life turns on a six months and that could be the very end of things yeah, so easily but, and so um, quickly. It did come across to me that Bob Geldof was a decent fella and he was trying to protect his children yeah. against drugs and things. So anyway, so I think that's, um, how did you feel at the end then with her? What would be your final thoughts? <clears throat> Well, I just saw a beautiful, I see her as a fairy, I've always seen her as a sparkly 1950s fairy on top of the Christmas tree. And then you see it's like a fairy with her wings broken. Yeah. I was very sad actually to see that. Well, it that. is I'm sad and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sad thing that, that it ended like that. But um, hopefully, you know, we know that life goes on after death. Well, I have dreamt and, about her twice. Yeah. And when I had a letter from... Uh, Bob and I said to him prayers and that go to the family. He said, "I'm sure, Jane, if anybody she would come through to you." I still got it in his handwriting. And even actually, when we went to see the movie, I could almost—I mean, I couldn't prove her presence, but I could almost. Perhaps it was the memories of her, but I felt that there was a closeness even then when people well, when we were sending our thoughts. Out, yeah, so. I felt sad. <coughs> I felt sad for her, sad for Michael, sad for his daughter. And in a way, sad for Bob Geldof, to be honest. Yeah. Sad for all of them. Well, I hope you found that little discussion interesting. And of course, some of it's in my books, isn't it? Um, in this book called Psychic Encounters, right? It's all about messages of hope from the spirit world. But I write in there about our early work as mediums and what we did in the early days, and particularly when we first got on TV and all that stuff about the, the Big Breakfast. Some of it's mentioned in there. And so if you like this channel, do please follow us. Click that little bell at the bottom of the screen and you'll get updates every time we put a new video up. And of course, you can come and see Jane and myself. Jane does private readings from our home in Eastleigh. I do readings by telephone. And of course, we've even got a team of psychic readers on the website. So do come along to psychics.co.uk. If you enjoy my channel, why not come and also join us on Facebook Live? Jane and myself broadcast regularly where you can ask questions and join in the fun of the psychic chat. Join us on Facebook Live.